Ohio, it's B here, and uh, got a little back and forth I thought people might enjoy. So it really shouldn't surprise anyone to know that I get a lot of private messages with people asking me either to expose somebody or to disprove false allegations. Now, aside from the fact that literally none of my content has ever been centered around exposing people, nor have I ever given any indication that I'm okay with spreading serious accusations that could potentially be false. Guys, my content has actually never been about exposing people. I just argue the serious claims made by others when they are dishonestly or incorrectly presented. Anyone who is exposed as a result of my content was only exposed because they tried to ruin someone else. If you want to say that I expose people, then it's by accident or by proxy. That is not the point of my content. Please stop asking me to expose people that you don't like. I don't really do that. On top of that, it may at the very least come as a moderate shock for you to hear that a good chunk of the people asking me to dispel these alleged false allegations, they don't turn out to be as innocent as their initial messages might imply. I've had people ask me to expose someone because the accuser was harassing them on an alternate account and the accused fought back. I've had people ask me to expose recently turned 18 year olds for being attracted to 16 and 17 year old characters and a cartoon pig, which they claimed was indicative of non-appropriate attraction actions to small humans. I've had people ask me to expose someone because they were tracing art and using someone else's art in videos, only for the accuser to literally be doing the exact same thing and harassing the other person because they didn't like a certain pairing of creepypasta characters. I've had people ask me to look into child predator allegations claiming that they were false, only for them to blatantly not actually be false and the guy had admitted to traveling across state lines to I mean, you know what these guys do. But today, we're going to be talking about a person who came to me claiming that a journal made on them was spreading serious allegations of misconduct. Their initial contact with me, what some of the allegations were, and then the conversation I had with them. Why? Because I think it's interesting and hilarious enough to deserve its own video. Before that, however, a little context. So, to start things off, Everybody's name here has been changed. I didn't tackle the situation in full for a lot of different reasons, mostly because I couldn't see a discrepancy within the presented allegations warranting them being disproven. But despite that, I'm not gonna spread them as though they're fact. I cannot be sure, which is the point, and therein I refuse to attach these allegations to connected parties. Obviously, this will be different in a case where all of the evidence was public and easy to see, like if the evidence for the allegations was all displayed on the accused's Twitter or something. If someone is plainly and publicly committing a crime, it's not like I need to look into third-party screenshots or testimony, but this situation wasn't that. I could find some of the allegations as the evidence still existed on DeviantArt, because yes, this is about a deviant, when I went searching, but the more serious allegations occurred through private DMs, and without the complete access to those DMs, how am I supposed to confidently make a claim that could have simply been brought about from a petty feud? I hope you guys can understand where I'm coming from in that regard. I'm not gonna make a video on some random person online, usually a child, children make mistakes, because of petty friend drama that could have been solved behind closed doors with a discussion. I will, however, make a video if somebody is trying to frame that petty friend drama and whatever bad evidence they might have as it being something worse as a means of ruining someone out of that pettiness or misery understanding. I'm usually even more likely to do this if you directly come to me trying to get me to make a video. Just saying. At that point, it's a matter for the proper authorities to look into, and I am not those authorities. You know, d despite what some people say. Because of that, yes, I changed the names of everyone involved, whether that be the person who originally came to me, those who were against them, or the minor at the center of these allegations. That being said, maybe we should actually go over what happened. <clears throat> Summon the Robo Babe! Hello, I'm here, I'm queer, and I'm ready to make your inhibitions disappear. Everybody, welcome Abigail, who will be my lovely assistant reading all of these ridiculous messages. I mean, I want to represent my community well, and if that means reading off some of the dumbest responses I've heard in a while, by George, I think I can do it. Later on, we'll eat some gummies, watch Pokemon videos, I'll bring the munchies, and you can bring the Galarian wheezing. <gasps> Yay! Platonic cuddling on cloud nine! So about a year ago, someone we'll just call a cult came to me in DeviantArt DMs and left me a message. Avi, care to do the honors? Hello, I've heard about you through a friend that you can help with false claims on someone such as pedo claims. Not even a, okay. This drama has been going on around me for a month, and many people have come harassing me and still want me to leave DA. I have noticed my faults thanks to a friend talking me through- <coughs> Sorry, I almost just fucking ejected all my intestines onto my phone. I have noticed my faults thanks to a friend talking me through it. 
but they're still going on with the month-old claims and letting more people get after me. They have changed their journal a lot due to others pointing out some things wrong with the journal. Here is the journal. Link. <coughs> here is the journal defending me. Link. And here is the Wayback Machine of what the journal looked like before they changed the entire thing. Link. And here is the WBM of when they disabled the comments for people defending me. Link. And here's my apology journal I made. Link. The people who have been harassing me the most. Heavy Pair. Toll Free Mood. Badgie. Oxidized Acid. Teensy Tyler. <laughs> oh no, not Teensy Tyler. Oh. Minor Bullet. A drawing Badgie made of my character occult. Link. I do not agree it's a vent. I agree it's a death threat towards me, since a cult is supposed to represent me as my persona. A journal Badgie made of info that I don't know where he got it from. Link. Right off the bat, I've got a lot of different links to go through, which led me down a rabbit hole of stupidly long and in-depth journals with evidence out the wazoo. It took me hours to get through the whole damn thing. This is why I don't have a life. You guys want to know why my Ponder Sprocket videos take so long? Well, here's exactly why. They handed me not one, not two, but three not fantastically written, annoyingly long journals and one small stupid apology, all with their own evidence screenshots. All of which I was apparently supposed to go over so I could understand what was going on because a cult couldn't be bothered to tell me exactly what they were being accused of and where the lies were. Already, I have problems. Side note on that, it was actually five different journals I had to go through. I only remember this because I screenshotted all of this at the time, which is also why this tends to take so long. And I actually have folders from five different journals, including the one defending a cult, not three. The other two I found on my own, but were definitely still required reading material. Oh, and spoilers, uh, within that message, they actually revealed to me something I don't think they wanted me to know. Keep that in mind. This ranged from, and I'm going to list it here so you get an idea of exactly how many things people had to be annoyed at this person for, toxic behaviors like guilt tripping people into changing elements of commissioned work, appropriating free to use base animations and selling them as though they were original works, some of which specifically stated that they were not to be used as your character to hear pieces or for commissions, which this person blatantly did, passive aggressively and then sometimes aggressively suggesting that artists should lower their prices, threatening not life or publicly shaming people in status posts when they don't respond kindly to or point out that toxic behavior, stealing character designs, lying about honestly really stupid and mundane things, animal abuse, tracing, being a viper, making claims against other people that they have no evidence for, threatening to report and falsify claims against an artist if they don't draw what a cult demands, and making up their significant other. I'ma be real with you guys, most of this journal was garbage. It used situations where the writer admitted that everyone was being immature and unnecessarily aggressive, but decided to only call out a cult for this behavior. They sort of ignore that the commission a cult requested a change on was a commission. They had the right to they had the right to request a change because they were the commissioner. The accusation of character theft is centered around both of them being wolf dog hybrids with blue fur, named after things that people associate with the color blue. No, I'm not kidding, that is it. Here's a recreation of these characters with the exact same fur color patterns, except it's pink. These were even both made using one of those same furry character bases, so of course they were going to look the same. These complaints are almost always dumb. Plus, realistically, any accusation where you believe it could be proven that someone was breaking the law, which this journal author believed, should probably take precedent. Things like this sort of just tax on petty complaints and it draws focus away from actual provable issues. At least that's how I see it. But that could also just be me not wanting to have to go through stuff like this because it's a waste of my time. The animal abuse thing is based on nothing except a single line about a family in-joke and it's pretty gross to accuse someone of killing their pet off of that alone. The stuff about tracing and stealing other people's work? That's all fine though. I mean, it's not fine, but uh, yeah, yeah, a cult totally did that. They even still had these pieces available on their DeviantArt when they contacted me, so it really wasn't hard to confirm that part of the journal. I don't know what the hell they were thinking on that one. And then there's them just kind of being a toxic person. Figure that should go without saying, given that, you know, we're talking about them. 
Oh, and the apology, because they messaged me, so they were definitely not sincere about that. Whatever. Now, all of these are pretty blasé affairs if you've been on DeviantArt for long enough. Ah, but then we get to the updated journal with the predator allegations. Trigger warning for the R word and the red rum word in reference to underage characters. A cult was effectively accused of sexually harassing a 15-year-old. We'll call them... Purple. This included things like a cult asking Purple to date them and requesting they draw not safe for work material of Purple's underage, very clearly child characters. There were screenshots of a cult claiming that they had a crush on one of Purple's underage characters. I believe they were between the ages of 8 and 12. I might be wrong on that. Screenshots of Purple indicating that a cult's feelings for them were socially viewed as being inappropriate, i.e. predatory, and a cult stating that they dislike that mentality. However, arguably the most condemning element was a cult creating a roleplay scenario with themselves where their character read rums and our words a group of children so here's where i sit if i give a cult the benefit of the doubt and assume they're being truthful when they tell me these accusations are false then there are two means by which i can figure that out the first is the fact that the screenshots are cropped down to single messages in some cases and the second is that these are private dms which can easily be taken out of context and edited and the screenshotted evidence of the role play had clearly been edited Despite this still technically being classified as written pornography of the FBI open up variety, because it was edited, there existed the possibility that Purple had been goading them on, or else participating in the roleplay as something of a, a horror story exercise. Uh, that's pretty stupid. Yeah, no worries, I hear ya. The problem is that this had to do with Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh. Anyone aware of that series knows that it deals with haunted animatronics as a result of dead kids. So technically speaking, it's a very real possibility to consider. Outside of the conversation being completely fake, which they had made no claims about at the time when they messaged me, this was the only sort of immediate counter to the claims that a cult would have had, and obviously it was an avenue I had to consider just in case. Usually you have to find whatever holes exist, either in the evidence or the testimony, before you can really worm your way into the core of a situation. Once you find them, you just pick and pull until you can squeeze your way inside and then float around in the putrid, rotting whale carcass that the whole thing probably is. And so, to test the waters as to how truthful they would be with me, and with the intent of getting my hands on the full, undoctored conversation, I contacted a cult on Discord. This was the conversation that followed. Tried sending a note, didn't get a response. Hey, you contacted me about the journal. Do you have any supplementary evidence outside of what was presented in the journal or additional context for screenshots presented in the journal that changed the context of the evidence used for the allegations? Jesus passed me, use periods! I don't know what supplementary means. Additional. Then no, because I deleted the DMs I had with Purple. That was... Why would you do that? Because he's no longer active on that account. That was back in January. Yes, but now that you've done that, you no longer have access to them. And the context behind those DMs is literally the only thing that would prove the screenshots as they are presented in the journal wrong. Not really. My family knows. Knows what? That I'm not a pedo. Yup. Sure. Totally, man. <laughs> I'm not a pedo, my mommy told me. <laughs> Avi, please. Please don't tell me that you actually think that's effective evidence. If you're going to be negative about this... You came to me to disprove the allegations. There's little to nothing within the journal itself that hints towards the allegations being without merit. The only thing that would do that is if the screenshots were faked, or if they were taken out of context. You haven't made note that they're fake, and now you've told me that you don't have access to the potential additional context. <laughs> they were edited. Why did you sound like a shocked anime character? Funny, you never mentioned that. Actually, I did. Where? Uh, everywhere. Literally where? Send me a link to a place where you have made that claim. I read nothing like that in the links you sent me in the note. In a status post. Which one? I don't know. It's lost. Look, if you're not going to help, that's fine. You're not giving me anything to work with. I don't want to talk to someone who won't help. I'm trying to help, but I don't have anything to work with. I've given you plenty of things to work with. Oh my god, reading these in this voice is just fucking like the guy from Hatred. Remember the, the g Hatred, the game where you just go around murdering people because guy don't like man, ooh, unga bunga. That's what this feels like to me. What? Oh, oh. Yeah, I could see that. 
As I've explained, there is nothing within the accusation journal that hints that the accusations are without merit. The only thing that could defend the screenshots used in the pedo allegation segment is if they were fake or taken out of context. In order to dispel them and show that they are fake or taken out of context, I need the full original conversation. How are you expecting me to help when I don't have anything that proves your innocence? Uh, my family and friends know I'm innocent. I thought your name was a cult. If you say that's not enough proof, then what the fuck is? I can't go to DM, so that's out. That's testimony. That's hearsay. It is widely known to be the least reliable form of evidence to the point where people don't use it. For one thing, your family would not want to think that you were a pedophile. They also might just not know. Additionally, unless you could get your family to come online and tell me directly that you're not a pedo and let me record that, it means nothing. Even then, it's bad evidence. As I stated, the only thing that could prove that Purple was lying is the actual DMs. Do you have any other DMs with Purple? Records of them? Nope. Purple's dead. He committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> he committed suicide. <laughs> I am literally in contact with someone who's in contact with Purple. <laughs> Yeah, remember when I said I did a few hours of looking into this before contacting a cult? Well, contacting someone who could get into contact with Purple was a part of that preliminary research part. <laughs> Whoops. Purple's been gone since May. I have someone to prove that. Boy! That doesn't mean he committed suicide. He was depressed at the time, so... He also mentioned it. That doesn't mean he is dead. That's just an assumption on your part. It's not just me who thinks that. It doesn't matter if other people think that. You just stated it to me as though it were a fact. Please don't tell me things if you don't have confirmation of them. It makes this entire process difficult and means that I have to do extra digging. Can we all just appreciate that when I informed a cult that the person they claim to believe to be dead is actually alive, they are now trying to convince me that they are dead? I just told you that your friend isn't dead and that I'm in contact with them. Why are you not happy about this? It's almost like a cult was purposely trying to remove purple as an avenue to explore. I didn't say it was true. He committed suicide is a statement. If it wasn't true, then it was a lie. If it was something you believed but didn't know for sure, then you would have said we slash I think he might have committed suicide. If me on that, like, it's not like when you say something, there's a general social assumption that, unless specified, what you're communicating is the truth. Why would people have conversations if there was an immediate assumption they'd be lied to? And like, you said that in response to me asking about the DMs! It was your excuse for why you didn't have them! Ah! No, it is. Well, not my fault, I have trouble explaining things. Okay, do you have any notes from Purple? Or notes sent to Purple? Like on DeviantArt? Or did you guys have Twitter and send messages to one another on their Other accounts? Nothing that helps me. How do you know that? Um, because we never talked on DA. So then the actual answer would be, no, I don't have notes from Purple on DeviantArt. Not having notes is vastly different from having notes that you feel wouldn't be helpful. The only notes I have from him are private and not to be shared with. Private to what extent? Uh, I'm not telling you. Sorry. If you can't be forthright with me, then I can't help you. A fair amount of inappropriate things that I imagine you would have preferred been kept private were showcased in that journal. Is what's in those notes there and so much worse that you refuse to share them even if they might clear your name? Nothing in those damn notes about any of this. Please understand that. You want to know what's in those notes so damn bad? They were vents, okay? Vents from you to purple or from purple to you? Vents about what? I'm not telling you. They were private vents that no one needs to know about. Ooh, who would you murder? You can't even tell me who was the one doing the venting? It was purple. Oh, that's anticlimactic. And these messages outside of Discord was the only other means of talking with purple that you had? Yes. All right, I try to do a little more digging and see what I come across. If I have any additional questions, can I contact you here? Sure. If it were not already apparent by my not having done a video on this situation, I had no reason to contact a cult further. Upon getting into contact with Purple, it was fairly obvious that the conversation had... Yeah, 
probably actually happened, and there was no real justification for a cult's completely inappropriate behavior with this child, nor the existence of this disgusting roleplay. When going over the roleplay itself and looking at the time frame for when these messages were sent, we get times like 656, 658, 659, 701, 702, 702, 703, and it just goes on and on and on. No real time for the person on the other end to offer anything. It's just the cult sending message after message of disgusting sexually charged deviant content to a 15 year old. The screenshots were edited, sure, but just edited to compact them together and let Purple voice their emotions regarding them. Nothing that hinted towards them being entirely fake. Oh, and remember when I said that a cult might have revealed something to me that they wouldn't want revealed? Yeah, remember when they contacted me and said this? I do not agree it's events. I agree it's a death threat towards me, since a cult is supposed to represent me as my persona. Remember also that part where I said that the story they sent to Purple had their character, a cult, doing all that horrible stuff to children? This character that is apparently supposed to be their persona, so much so that someone drawing hate art of the character is a death threat to them, the artist? Yeah. So what you're saying is, you sent a sexually charged DM self-insert story to a 15-year-old where your self-insert persona character read rums and our words a group of prepubescent children? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So what's happened since then? Well, more journals calling out a cult's behavior were made, now calling a cult out for blatantly going back on their apology, openly calling Purple a liar, and explaining why Purple's calling them out with... You know what? I'll just let Avi read it. Oh, by the way, this was written on one of Occult's alt accounts. I don't care about how Purple feels, or really how anyone feels. He can take all of his fake evidence and delete it with himself. I have tried to defend Occult. They have a rough life, and if anything, they deserve to be shipped with the character Brandy in the story they wrote. Shaded, or purple, as he is called, is just jealous and he will never get what he wanted. To me, that is funny. It makes it more funny because of how he has so much faith to try and take a cult down. He makes himself look way worse. Give up, you have no point to continue. Other people are going at purple as I speak too. So if he ends up upset, here is some advice for person who called them out. Just end it. Now. So the 15 year old is jealous because you made up a story where your persona raped an eight year old. Honestly, I don't even know how to continue the video from that. So I'm just gonna straight up list off a bunch of other dumb shit they did. If we're going to mock a moron, then there's plenty more moronic things to mock them for. Oh, what's that? You want to witness some of this strange behavior? Well, lucky for you, I can provide. Duck da da da! Case in point, observe. Exhibit A. Get this, a cult's justification for stealing someone's work is that when they get the commission and draw the character, the design now belongs to a cult. People just don't understand how designing and commissioning someone works. Huh? People also apparently can't take the time and read my TOS. I don't refund once a design is already made. And if you don't claim slash want the design that I made, I have all rights to sell it to anyone who wants it. It's still mine, design and or character, until actually claimed by someone. Not yours. This is not scamming. This is common sense. What the fuck? People are trying to start fucking drama about this. Of course they're fucking because- <laughs> Of course they fucking are. Because they're assholes. Just stop. You just want attention at this point. Knock your shit off. This is very childish to argue about, and you should be- you should know this, censored. If this keeps up, I might just keep the design character since it's still mine. Because, you know, if the commissioner doesn't like the finished commission, then a cult doesn't have to refund them and gets to sell the piece as an adoptable. That's totally how that works when someone's given you specific design parameters to draw their character. Oh, and the money for it. 
Maybe take a gander at that time a cult tried to blame their behavior on the fact that they had ADHD. Sorry, but I had to get this off my chest because I've been getting this type of shit hate for a while now. If you think I'm an attention seeking, please unwatch me. What the f okay? I don't want you here. I can't help it. Apparently, you don't get what ADHD stands for. It stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Attention is in the name. You dumbasses. I like attention. Who fucking cares? Obviously, the stalkers do and think it's fucking evidence. Sorry, but it's not. And I bet all of you are gonna be like, a cult's blaming their ADHD on this again? Well, if you knew the symptoms of ADHD, you would probably understand. And if you knew the symptoms of ADHD and what ADHD is, you probably wouldn't be making this post, but here we are. There are many symptoms who each person with ADHD, some are similar and some are different. God fucking- Go ahead and screenshot this, it proves nothing. Only that you're a stalker looking for the attention. What's that? You want some interaction? Well, what about that time a cult tried to lie about owning the copyright to a name? <sighs> oh fuck, I just read the first one. God, I don't how I feel about this, TBH. I don't know if you know how to write a fucking coherent sentence. What do you mean? Queen Occult. Uh, I have a copyrighted character with that name. The name Queen Occult is copyrighted to me. This makes me really uncomfortable. Sorry. Mind changing the name, please, to avoid confusion and people attacking you because of it? I know my close friends, and if they see this, they're going to attack you because you took the name Queen Occult. This is to protect you from being attacked. Names can't be copyrighted. They can be trademarked, but only if they are representing a company or product. And I don't really want to change her name, mainly because blah 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 personal justification. Doesn't matter, they did nothing wrong. Yeah, but still, people will get confused and not like it. And yes, names can be copyrighted. I have papers to prove it. Oh no, not the paper. If they don't like it, then that's their problem. But I'm not comfortable with removing a crucial part of my character because people might not like it. If that were the case, I wouldn't be able to do anything in case someone just didn't like it. And I've always heard that names cannot be copyrighted, and a Google search is also telling me the same thing. Just get rid of the queen part. Well, the internet lies, so just take the queen part it and you're done. Also, by, by the way, I'm not a bully. I'm just trying to avoid copyright striking you for taking the name Queen Occult. I have papers to prove that I have copyrighted the name Queen Occult, not Occult itself. Yeah, you can change it to avoid copyright. Look, I'm done arguing. Wish you luck with not being attacking. What the I thank you for not continuing the argument, but my final point is that I don't know what those supposed papers say, but copyright straight up doesn't cover names unless they are trademarked. Both occult and queen occult cannot be copyrighted. They're names. Names can't be copyrighted. That's it. That's the D. Then how do you explain the papers? I have saying the name queen occult is copyrighted, but okay. I don't know about those papers. What I do know about is the law, though, which says I'm in the clear. Copyright papers. Copyright is a law. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ. Actually, I will, but you're being rude to me, so I'm not showing you them. Sorry. What do you want? Proof? And I am being bullied. You want proof? Too bad. You're not getting it. And apparently, you didn't read the comments. I said I'm done arguing, so leave me alone. Thanks. God. The whole title, Queen Occult, is copyrighted. But Queen is more copyrighted. It's more copyrighted. It's, the, it, it's a level of copyright that has ascended past copyright. It's copyright 2. And I did not threat to attack. I was giving a warning because one of my friends might see this. And well, you know, you just don't understand. Oh no. I, I... We've got the claim that Occult swipes the Your Character Here pieces from other artists and breaks the terms of service to use it themselves, whether the original artist approves of it or not. Can you make the pink one? <laughs> I hate the orange one. Well, others like this one so I make it and I had only planned to do this one so I could do other sexualities flux. But out of curiosity, could I ask why you don't like the orange and pink one? 
The orange one looks bad to me I just personally like the pink one since it's more prettier and popular. Oh, I see. Personally I like the orange better cause I just like how it looks and the meanings behind the colors as well as the inclusiveness. But anyway, to answer your question, I will not be making the pink one unless I get several requests for it. Really? Please. I even pay for one if I have two. I don't like the orange one, and I want to use a lesbian doggo on my page, but it has to be pink. If you don't make one, I'll make one myself. One. You can in fact commission me for a page at all, it's in my pixel commission journal. Two. You can in fact make a lesbian doc yourself, I certainly don't own the idea of sexuality docs, that would be ridiculous. So you could make one yourself if you really want, but you can't use my dog base from this nor can you edit this page at all or copy the design from here. 1. Don't have any points too. I will credit you for the base. I'm too lazy to find one and too lazy to make one myself 3. I'm resuesting on, which you said I would do. Shouldn't you just take it? 1. I'm confused on why you said you would pay if you can't pay. 2. I don't care if you credit me, that doesn't change the fact that I don't want it used as a base. 3. Yes, I did say you could request whatever you want, which you are free to do. But as the artist, I am allowed to choose what I want to spend my time and effort doing. Didn't you have this case as a free to use base a while ago? That's not fair that you said I can't use it when you have the same thing as a free to use base. I'm using it because it was a free to use base not too long ago. Also I'm try to help you get noticed, but if you don't that's on you if you don't want people to notice you. I took down the fair to you space on account of me wanting to open commissions for custom pride flag page doll slash k9 pride flag x using the space, then and I've noticed I could improve the base in the future. So the base is no longer up and you are not permitted to use this as a base. And I don't care about exposure as any form of payment, that will not work for me. I'm doing fine exposing myself I'd say, and it's not like the reason I'm on here is to be popular and to be noticed, that it's not my goal. I always have the base saved to my computer, so... I'm sorry, are you threatening to use the base even though I've already said you can't? Then of course there are the instances where they try to scam people out of adoptables or DA points because they can't accept not getting what they want. Number 1, number 26, number 17, number 48, Number 21, please. Send the points, please. I changed my mind on one. I want 17 instead of 15. 17 is pending adoption for someone else. I asked first. It's just my phone was being weird. They commented on it 16 minutes ago. You commented on it, like, five minutes ago. No, I didn't. I commented when you posted it into the group. I'll outbid them for number 17 if I have to. Either that or I get my five points back. Then I'll send you your five points back. I'm sorry. I'm just going off of who commented first, and it shows that they commented first, so I'll take number five off your order. But I requested it first. N n no. You said you changed your mind after they commented for it. They requested it first. My phone was being weird. I commented first. I just edited my comments. I called number 17 first, so it's considered mine. Like a child. And then a cult blocked the person they were buying the design from. Brilliant. And then, you know, lying about the artist who didn't give them immediately what they wanted without question, because that's the next obvious step. Okay, so I bought an adoptable fair and square. The owner or creator of the adoptable is like, You don't deserve to win the adoptable, but I want it back, please. I asked if I return it, I demand a full refund. They simply replied, Nah, someone like you doesn't deserve a $50 refund. I told them, no refund, huh? Then I'll be keeping the character that they accused me of stealing. How? How is that stealing exactly? I kept the character I won completely fair. I owed everything about it. This is why I've had thoughts of leaving. I had a friend report their ass of scamming and accusing. I'm so done with people at here at this point. Oh no, how dare they accuse me? I'm gonna accuse you. You. Oh well, who is this person? If you want, you can note me them or tell me on Discord. If you're not comfortable with it, that's fine. 
Nova Dweeb, I think. What adopt was it? Pink. Oh, wow. I'm still astonished. Glad you didn't return him. Please don't try to slander my name for something I didn't do. Thanks. Unless you have actual proof of payment slash purchasing, or even me saying this at all. It's a different Nova Dweeb, dude. Not you. I don't even know who you are. The only other Nova Dweeb that exists is an inactive account and, oh really? You have no idea who I am? <laughs> the character you've called Pink in Claim was the one taken away. A character that I designed. Just face it, dude. You got caught in your lies. I actually didn't steal anything. Someone gave me the character. They stole me the character. <laughs> Even admitting that the character design is stolen, sure. Make it easy for us. Hell, I'm not complaining. They even tried to claim copyright over the species, and species is in the biggest of quotation marks here, you'll see why, ghost doggos. Just to inform you, but ghost doggos are a closed species, meaning you can't just make one. You need to ask and or buy one. They also belong to me. So you should have credited me as well, but you never ask to make one either. So please remove this. Thank you. No, he isn't a closed species. I just made him. UHH still resembles and has the same name as my species called Ghost Doggus. Link, please remove this. Thank you. No, I won't be removing this. First off, resemblance is not enough reason for me to no longer draw my character. Second, you can't ban people from the words ghost doggo. Doggo is a common cutesy name for a doggo, and a ghost is a widely used noun. So putting the two together does not result in a name only one person can use. Thirdly, the idea of a canine with a skull slash mask is not a new idea, nor is it specific to you. Neither is the idea of a dog as a ghost. There have been people before you with the concept, and there will be people after. Fourth, as a close species maker, you should always be prepared to find something similar. There are no original ideas, and with as many artists and creators out there, there will always be something similar. You cannot have everyone take down everything that resembles your stuff. Fifth, ghost dogs are not a solid close species concept. It is a dog as a ghost. Again, you are not the first to come up with this concept. And it is wildly unreasonable to say that anyone who has something such as a ghost dog as a character is copying you or using the idea without your permission. I would suggest taking a look at your species and implementing aspects to make them stand out as your own, because dogs who are ghosts is not a firm idea for a closed species at all. Thanks for coming to my TED talk, my deviation will stay up. I tried to reason with you, but you are listening. I'm still probably going to reporting ya for taking and naming it after my closed species. Sorry, but this bothers me extremely bad. That sounds like a you problem. But my dog is literally just a doggy who died and is a ghost. I'm not willing to delete a character in my story just because your species is a common concept. That's what a ghost doggo is. And it actually is a you probably because you'll be dealing DA. Okay, then you do realize that a ghost is not a concept solely by you and that a dog is not a concept solely by you. A dog who has died and become a ghost is not a new idea. It's been in the movies and shows as well throughout history. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just saying that, realistically, you can't claim to own the idea and ban anyone else from having a dog character who's a ghost. Just change the name then so people don't get confused with my species. That's literally all I'm asking. Change the name as I'll leave you alone. Thank you. Dude. That's just the name of the deviation, not his species nor his name. My point is, you can't make people not have Ghost Doggo in a name for something. This is a pointless argument, bud. Just change the name of the art, please. Sure. Alright. Thank you. I just didn't want my friends coming here and questioning. I know them too well. Oh my god, what even is this? That, that salt shaker? Mine. Make it teal and put pepper in it, now it's original. You have a teal pepper shaker in your comic? Illegal. Not allowed. I'm calling the police. The fact that they admit that this isn't even a species and they're basically just saying that dogs who have died and become a ghost as a concept is something they own? Mm -mm, that's dumb. It's so tasty. 
So, after all of this, am I still going to censor a cult's name? Yeah, yes. Did- are, are you aware that we're at the end of the video? Are- are you okay? This shouldn't even be a question. Do you need to sit down? Do you need to lie down? But, I am going to make note of something. I went back to a cult's account, and for the most part, as of October 20th, 2020, they have made the claim to have vacated off of DeviantArt because of clips and everybody hates it. Which, you know, good thing, except I've checked their DeviantArt within 2021 and they continuously return to, and absolutely no one is going to be shocked by this, beg for free art and shill their own stuff. They also had a journal saying that they were only going to share their new socials with those they trusted and requested that their socials not be sent around to anyone else. They then signed the journal with a name that was different than their DeviantArt handle. So I typed that new name into Google plus Twitter. Luke, you truly were not difficult to find. Okay, I'm stopping there. If I keep going, I'm going to review their whole commission terms. So that was fun. Hopefully, probably not. The only real fun you can ever get out of someone trying to take advantage of children is when that person is a complete and utter buffoon with absolutely no common sense, so no real nefarious intentions are ever acted upon, which, lucky for us, a cult clearly was. I still don't know how someone can unironically say, oh, my family knows I'm not this, so that should be enough for you to prove me innocent. Who, who even? Uh, I'm not high enough for this. Did somebody say not high enough? You wanna eat some gummies, watch Promare, and nut at the animation? Do I? I could make a joke about extending that to some awesome fan art, but I don't know if anybody's got a nut allergy. Ah, but Ponder Sprocket doesn't in Thick by Purple Penno. I don't know how that's related, but it's definitely looking like she's trying to let you know that. Look at this hair twirl and hand hipped purple lined niceness. Nice lighting on that skirt too, ooh. Getting flashy, here's Look, Don't Touch by Horror Draws, where Ponder Sprocket is showing off those lovely muscular legs with some nice shiny little stars to accent that. Perfect for ramming feet up somebody's evidence, because that's where feet go, I promise. Decked in some glitz and glam, we have Octomama by Barry Booze, where Ponder Sprocket seems to be wearing a neat sparkly bikini. Side note, I actually love the pairing of the bikini design with the sparkly lips. That with the earrings are like a nice little triple thread. For some heavy lifting, Here's Muscle Practice featuring Ponder by Koto Furry Arts. Whew! Whether she's working out or showing off, those are some nice guns you've drawn her with there. And, and see, Tessa agrees. Tessa knows best. Out for an evening snack, here's Avalon and Ponder Sprocket by Harpus Dragon. See something you like? Oh, definitely. Man, something's going down tonight and it is for sure somebody's kink. Where's the back room? Don't forget to lock the door. Dressing for success, here's the lovely Ponder Lol by Memory P doing a really nice flowing pose. The subtle darker and lighter tones to really flesh out the shapes on the skin is so nicely done. It proper looks like Ponder Sprocket's posed up like a magazine model. And now we, uh, heck and run, I guess, because it's a 4 a.m. Ponder by Vistaril. Apparently she's on the prowl for Christian girls. There's a glowing red eye hidden somewhere and a smile that gives no calming indication. And so, while the art is nice, run. Here's some belated Christmas fan art by Vanilla Oni, which, wow, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think people would mind waiting for this gift. Might need to sit near the fire in that sweater, though. I think my favorite part's the lips. The way Vanilla draws them is so nicely stylized, it makes me think of kitty toe beans. For some bright, warm colors, we have Draw Me Like One of Your Thick Anime Girls by Atara Para Kitty, giving Ponder Sprocket and Fiend a lovely standout pink and orange makeover. Though, I guess Ponder Sprocket can't really change her skin color like Fiend can. Hey, but that's split up of her little hair janglies is hella cute. <laughs> Another day, another robot to bang by M. Divisgayf. I'm going to hell. We're going to hell and there's not going to be any oceans and this is going to be our punishment for being so thirsty. Ooh, but I love the motion in that pose. Damn girl. Hand? I forgot about the hand! Summoned by a penultimate choir, here's Saint and Her Court by Seek 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 Seek. C X X Y C X C. I hope I'm saying that right because otherwise I'm just saying. Look at this! Look at everyone! They're 
modeling cool little stained glass portraits. Oh my god, and Ponder Sprocket has the scale and the sword. We stand some beautiful visual symbolism. And finally, we'll end off with Ponder Broke the Stripper Pole by Peachy3231. Because Peachy... Oh, oh Peachy. You're grounded. <laughs> Let Ponder Sprocket strip. Who's throwing the money? Dola, what are you doing here? You're probably grounded too. If you like any of these pieces, please don't hesitate to show the artist some love through the links into the description. I've also got links down there if that's your thing. I hope you enjoyed this delve into... What? I straight up don't have an ending for this. And so, to test the waters as to how truthful they were... <laughs> <gasps> but, uh, A, that split up of her little ha hair, little hair janglies. <laughs> a, but that split up of her little hair janglies is hell. <sighs> a, but that split up of her little hair. <sighs>